Hi, welcome to the Alyssa Goodman Show. Every week I get to interview a game changer in the wellness arena. Today I have Dr. Will Cole, and he actually is an idol of mine. I met him just about a year ago. I sat next to him at a dinner party and absolutely fell in love and really didn't know everything about him. But the day after, I investigated thoroughly. And ever since, I have just like followed your website, followed everything on Instagram. I mean, he's a functional MD, and that's what I absolutely love and I love to send all my clients to. So, and he has a new book coming out called The Ketotarian, and it is really fascinating because it's a whole new take on the keto, the keto diet. Yeah. Um, it's so welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's so good to have you. Yeah. He, from Pittsburgh, all the way from Pittsburgh. Yeah. So that's why I feel honored <laughs> that I get you here. And when does the book actually launch? It comes out August 28th. Oh, wow. Which is tomorrow. Oh, my God. Yeah, okay. Tomorrow, yeah. Because you had said something about promoting it more in September. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. It but, is coming out tomorrow. Or we're going to be talking about it for a while, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the full functional MD, um, and you got into it 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, really, what got you started into the functional part of yeah. medicine? Yeah. So functional medicine and, and being a functional medicine practitioner, uh, it is the best of both worlds. And it's the marries the best of alternative health, which is actually getting somebody healthy yeah and the best of of being of, of conventional medicine which is being evidence-based and running labs and getting an objective perspective uh so the sort of the best both worlds is what attracted me to it so it, my journey into wellness kind of began in the 80s and 90s growing up in rural pennsylvania i when it was not instagram sexy to like drink tonics and no. elixirs but like i was that kid doing that because my parents were involved were interested in wellness and they kind of revered that oh so that was my worldview in that way growing mm -hmm. up uh and so i knew i wanted to get into healthcare. i went to an integrative school here in los angeles uh, southern california university of health sciences and i heard of a guy called detis karazian and detis karazian is still today one of the kind of forefathers of functional medicine. He speaks for IFM and and he was a hero of mine. And I that's how I heard about functional medicine mm -hmm. all those years ago. And it's I've never really looked back since. And now most of my patients, like we were talking about, right. are seen via webcam. And I didn't know, I don't know how I got here. Here, right, I was, I was gonna say. To patients in remote parts of the United States. The world, probably. Uh, the world, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, across Europe and, and Asia as well, because we're able to get people care wherever they're at. I think that's fast. Yeah. That's the fascinating part. Yeah, is because the people aren't really, and a lot of parts of the world aren't really clued into this functional yeah. medicine and how to really get to the root cause of health issues. They're chronically sick, and they go to doctor after doctor, and they're the doctor is saying you're fine, you know, or your labs show you're fine, right? All of yeah. these things that are so confusing for people. Yeah. Yeah, it could be, it's very discouraging to be, to see, for the patient, I mean, and you hear these stories over and over again, and you realize, wait, it's just not an isolated thing. Mm -hmm. These are, this is pervasive across the United States, across Western civilization of people struggling with health problems, unexplained symptoms, these autoimmune inflammation spectrum issues, uh, and their doctor says, you're just depressed take an antidepressant, you, you know, are just getting older and they settle for it. Right. Or uh, you just need to lose weight. Many women are told that. Uh, and it doesn't explain the full breadth of why they're struggling with these issues. So I'm happy to be a small part of fig figuring out clinically mm -hmm. what's going on here so we can deal with it and regain their health as much as we can uh, and start moving the trajectory for them in, in a better direction. In the right direction. Yeah. So they can thrive instead of just survive, right, yeah. in that way. But what is the first thing you do when someone comes to you? Well, it starts with a comprehensive health history mm -hmm. and asking a, de a lot of detailed questions. And that's functional medicine practitioners are like clinical Sherlock Holmes. Right. You know? And, and so, therapists. Yeah, therapists <laughs> as well. It can be 
obscure to the patient. They're like, mm -hmm. why the heck is he asking yeah. me if the outer third of my eyebrows are thinning or if I like <laughs> crave salt? Uh, or how maybe was I breastfed or not, yes, right? Or how were you born? Yeah, how were you born? Uh, for vaginal versus C-section. All of these things make up the story as to why we're at where we're at today. Yeah. And I had one older gentleman say, or he, he leaned over to me and said, are you in the KGB? <laughs> they asked all these obscure questions, but I'm not in the KGB. I just want to dig deeper from a clinical standpoint. What's missing? Because the last thing I want to do is add to the pile of labs or add to the pile of doctors that they've seen have failed them. And, and meds, I, right, too. Yeah, Maybe they're I, you're on a bunch of meds that aren't working. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I take that responsibility very seriously. And I don't want to waste anybody's time. I don't want to add to their pile of failures in yeah. their wellness journey. Right. So you take a detailed history, then you go into blood work. That is, mm -hmm. this is, this is so important these days, Will, because, um, people come with their labs to me and it is like nothing. It's like for the thyroid, it's TSH and T3, T4, none of the other important, the more important numbers. And also just iron and not ferritin or like all these crazy things. There's not enough information on these labs right. that doctors take. It's medications or surgery if it's indicated. So yes, we aren't so concerned with, okay, let's do this medicinal matching game and mm -hmm. see if they, what, 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 if they would give them a blood pressure or a statin or a thyroid medication or an antidepressant, how, what's the root cause? which isn't a medication deficiency. Yeah. And that's what we're concerned with in functional medicine. Right. That is, I mean, what are you seeing like a lot of, I mean, I, I was going to say, answer the question, but autoimmune or is there just, is there other things as well? It's, that's my top patient base okay. are people with autoimmunity. But the sad part is that can impact just about every system of your body. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's over 140 different autoimmune conditions. So that wow. is a one term, but it's far reaching. Mm -hmm. as far as its impact on the body. So it can impact the brain, the thyroid, your joints, your digestion, uh, every system in the body. Right. So while it's autoimmune in commonality, the, 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 the far-reaching implications of that looks different for different people. Right. And I heard you on a podcast that was pretty amazing um, that you said something about like once you get diagnosed with that autoimmune, you've had that autoimmune condition for years. Yeah, 10 years on average prior to the diagnosis. Wow. As when these things begin. That is so they've been living like that slowly. It's been they haven't really been taking care of it. So slowly they yeah. have been kind of going downhill probably right. a bit. Right. And there's some people that will never be diagnosable. Meaning that mm. they'll never reach that point of degeneration where their immune systems attack certain parts of their body. They'll be in this stage two in the autoimmune inflammation spectrum, this autoimmune reactivity. Okay. Where they, this is, these are the people that are labeled chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia and it looks autoimmune is what the doctors say. Yeah. But they are always never pigeonholed. They're not able to be put in a bucket of being, giving a diagno diagnosis code. Right. Yeah. So, you, I mean, you also were into like all kinds of other different modalities in terms of healing these people mm -hmm. than most, you know, doctors out there, right? Yeah. And supplements is one of them. What are some of the others? Well, it's really everything. Another word for functional medicine is integrative medicine. Mm -hmm. So foods are primary, obviously. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, food is the foundation. And from there, we can look at all the other components, because you don't want to just say it's just food. It's not just food. Right. Uh, it's the foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, but look, when you're dealing with these inflammatory problems, I've seen the healthiest food under the sun flare people up, where it's like on the surface, mm. like, well, yeah, eat your salad. That sounds right. great, right? But these people aren't even able to digest salads well. They're getting sick from salads. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the salad's fault. It's these wrecked gut it's these food sensitivities, this overreaction to these foods. So anything's fair game in this realm of inflammatory problems as far as finding out what foods work for them and what foods don't. So okay. you have to be open-minded and not say, this is the way everybody should do their life because I'll be proven wrong all day long seeing patients if right. I hang my hat on one way of eating. Right, true. It, the umbrella is real food, mm -hmm. but under the umbrella, it differs from person to person. How do you find out if what foods don't work for you or not? Labs, okay. health history, mm -hmm. and then using real life as a lab. Okay, and just, just testing. Tracking, tracking yeah. and, sing, and they're sending in food logs and we're talking to them. And that's the way we operate our functional medicine practices. We are talking to them multiple times a week for the first couple of months to get a handle on how this Re is 
impact. Yeah, what's really happening in, in their day-to-day -day day life in real day -to -day time. Day-to-day life. Because real life happens when you're not talking to a doctor. Yeah. It's like bad days or questions or like uh, not even knowing what to do. Yeah. So to have clarity is huge for these people because they are feeling disillusioned. Because as we know, I mean, there's so much conflicting information online. I mean, Dr. Google is a fickle, <laughs> fickle man. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> we want to give them clarity for them. God help us. Because yeah. you can substantiate your worst, worst fears yeah. by Googling it. By Googling it. You can substantiate what you want in your agenda mm -hmm. by Googling it. Yeah. So uh, we are trying to be as objective as we can to give them direction. Yeah. Wow. Um, Let's talk about your book because it's Thanks. pretty exciting. The people you have recommending it, like yeah. I know some of them, they're just like really top leaders in this whole health and wellness world. Um, I love what you're doing here, merging the keto with the plant-based. Yeah, I'm it's what ketotarian is. It's the best, just like functional medicine is the best of both worlds between conventional alternative. Yeah. Ketotarian is the best of being plant-based and in in, in the ketogenic diet. Uh, so it was really birth out of my clinical experience seeing patients and my own wellness journey and seeing what works and what doesn't. And even within the umbrella of being plant-based keto, there's so much personalization. So I had to, when I read the book, bring that functional medicine bio-individuality to the book because we, I know within the umbrella of being plant-based keto, we can personalize it. Right. So I did as much as I could within a book form without me being there right. <laughs> for, the, for every person. But what's yeah. what's great is all those clients that you had, you know, firsthand information from that what was going on with them and their certain health issues worked these this diet modality, right? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I mean, finally, someone with the right keto <laughs> yeah. actual program. Yeah. I mean, the, it's funny that <laughs> when I wrote Ketotarian and I talked to our mutual friends and colleagues yeah. and in this space i could see the look in their eyes like what the heck because i either didn't like keto yeah and like i can't get behind this yes or they didn't like being plant-based because they were hardcore keto right and they couldn't get behind it so i was kind of ruffling the feathers in both worlds right but when they read it they all got behind it uh-huh so i'm super thankful for that that i can have some amazing thought leaders in wellness uh, kind of the top medical doctors in mm -hmm. the country in this space of functional medicine get behind ketotarian. I'm super blessed. Wow. I mean, it's going to be amazing. Nice. But can you just talk a little bit about what ketotarian means? Like just the yeah. basics for people? Yeah. So ketotarian is my made up word. <laughs> that it is the, it's the alchemy between the best of being plant-based and being keto. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's three different tracks. There's vegan keto, vegetarian keto, we bring, bring in eggs and yeah. grass-fed ghee, mm -hmm. and pescatarian keto, or what I call in the book, uh, vegetarian. So it's wild caught oh, fish and shellfish. Well, that too. That's a word you made up too. Oh, yeah, all made up <laughs> words. But, yeah. but it's, it's using these awesome nutrient-dense food medicines mm -hmm. to shift your body into ketosis. So ketosis is, for lack of better words, fat burning. So it's your us burning our own fat as well as dietary fat. Uh, so it is a meta, it's about, it's about metabolic flexibility. Mm -hmm. so your body naturally produces ketones, mm -hmm. which is so much exciting science around ketones and what it can do for our health. It can pass through the blood brain barrier and provide our brain clean energy. So it helps with chronic fatigue and brain fog issues. But the top clinical application that I love about ketosis is the anti-inflammatory benefits. So beta-hydroxybutyrate is that main ketone. It drives down inflammatory cytokines. Mm -hmm. So all these people with these autoimmune inflammation issues, it attenuates and calms that inflammation. So it's hugely beneficial. Right. Uh, so that's the awesome science around ketosis. Mm -hmm. And awesome, obviously, we know the benefits of being plant-based. Right. So I didn't want to pick one or the other. I want to say, well, we can have both. Yeah. And there's a lot of people out there that want to try this keto thing, but they're like, I don't want to have meat and dairy all day long. Right. And the short-term benefit- Which we know isn't, which is inflammatory if you're going to have which, it all yeah. day long. And the problem is, and the kind of misnomer is, is that many people go keto and they see the initial yeah. benefits because they're going off of grains mm -hmm. and sugar. They feel better and they, and they lose weight. And they lose weight. Yeah. They're lower carb. Yeah. So a this more brain. honeymoon period of the conventional ketogenic diet, 
the problem that I'm seeing and I'm hearing from people is the long-term impact of that. So let's make this sustainable. Wellness should be sustainable. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I think keto tearing will suit their keto world very well as well because they want to keep the benefits going, but they're st stuck at this plateau because there's only so long you can just live on meat and dairy right. and become overly fearful of vegetables because they're afraid of their carb content. Yeah. So I really kind of show the science on this and why they shouldn't fear plant foods and they really could embrace this way of eating. And with the vegan one, what, what are the protein sources? The protein sources are, uh, I allow for fermented soy okay. products if it's organic and non-GMO. So okay. tempeh. I love that. <laughs> natto. Yeah. So there's that. Edamame. Yeah. 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 Uh, and nuts and seeds, yeah. obviously. Okay. Uh, what about beans, legumes? Uh, some? I allow pod-like legumes. Okay. And then after eight weeks of trying this plant-based keto mm -hmm. thing out, they can bring in more legumes if they want okay. to. Um, but the first eight weeks, we're shifting the body into ketosis, pod-like legumes, Fermented soy is allowed. Okay. Nuts and seeds are allowed. Uh, and like things like sacha inchi, I don't know if, you know, this is like an Incan yeah. nut. Yes. The high protein mm -hmm. and vegetables have varying amounts of. Right. And spirulina. So there's right. a lot of plant based protein sources. I know that's okay. a question that people have is like, how am I going to get my protein? Right. Um, yeah. So we are making sure that everybody gets their amino acids, their essential amino acids. Okay. And vegetarian, I assume, is like you said, eggs and cheese. So some uh, dairy, some high uh, not cheese. ghee. Not ghee, not, not cheese, yeah. Uh, it's dairy free other yeah, than okay. ghee, but ghee removes the casein. Mm -hmm. So there's no inflammatory problems with that. It's just the dairy fats from grass fed cows for people that want that. Again, right. it's, not man it's not a mandate, yeah. but people can have it if they want it. Right. And then the pescatarian, is it like with the fish, is it once a day or is it, you know, is it limited at all? No, we're, okay. we're picking the best fish sources out there. So if somebody, and this is why I wanted, what I wanted to convey in Ketotarian is this sort of idea of grace-based way of eating. Mm -hmm. They don't have to feel overly dogmatic or stressed. Because I think, honestly, I think orthorexia and becoming obsessive about <laughs> food is a problem in our space. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to also infuse this conversation when we're talking about macros and ketosis and being, being mindful of your food okay, wait, let's back up a little bit. And l this is about food. This yeah. is about feeling good. Stressing about your food <laughs> isn't good for your health. So it's like, uh, the reason why I say this is a topic about fish. We're picking the best fish out there mm -hmm. as far as the environmental working groups, research and other uh, research being done, looking at the cleanest fish out there. Right. And if people want to enjoy fish, they can have the fish, uh, but still being plant-centric. Right. Their foundation is still plant food, but they can bring in these fish if they want if they want it. Right. And I make the argument in the book of the bioavailability of the omega fats from fish being really good for inflammation. So, totally. yeah. I mean, fish is, yeah, where it's at. You don't get that same omegas from vegetarian or vegan sources, right? No. I mean, algae-based? Yeah, the bioavailability is low, but algae-based algae is, is better. better. Yeah. Okay, yeah, wow. So what's, you know, are you, is this the first book? By the this way, is it book. is. Wow. Yeah, I have ebooks, but that doesn't okay. count. Okay, right. Yeah, so this is my first first book, and book. going on a book tour. Yeah. It, like ne like coming this yeah, week, I, or I you're here is, in LA I think for this is my book tour right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> like everything I'm doing right. right now. I'm in my mind considering yeah. the book tour. I see patients during the week, so right. that's primarily my my job. Yeah, right? <laughs> that's what I focus on. But yeah, this week is I book think stuff. I asked you when I saw you um, in the summer, how many patients do you see a day? I mean, this is pretty crazy. Yeah. Like you see a lot. I've seen patients 10 hours a day. <gasps> uh, yeah. What does that do for your health and mental well-being? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, your kids at home. Yeah. <laughs> I have to keep my, I have to practice what I teach. Mm -hmm. And I have to focus on self-care as much as I can throughout the workday. Okay. You know, and that's what patients are like, oh, well, it's easy for you to say. I'm like, wait, no, we're the same. Mm -hmm. All my patients are working class people. We're all working. We all have busy lives. I do practice what I teach. Uh, it doesn't make it easy. Yeah. It just means we have to stay on our game with what works and what doesn't. And, you know, I love what I do. And I think that's a bigger part of it, too, right. is that right. it's, when you love what you do, it makes it a lot easier. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like so much easier. But will you ever cut back from that? Schedule? Probably not. It doesn't sound like you're even interested in that. Yeah, I don't know. You just want to help people. Yeah. I, really? I, I have stuff to do. Yeah. I have stuff to I do know, for a you while. I know. You do. 
Yeah. Yeah. So you're really, you really are a game changer. I mean, I've met so many people in the health and wellness space and I'm so much older than you. (laughs) And I, and I just feel like the energy you have in your, just with what you do Mm -hmm. and just the knowledge base and just the compassion is so incredible. Like all of those things together, it makes you just a fabulous human being and a really amazing doctor. So so I would say to anybody who's listening that you are somebody absolutely to look at, to maybe get checked out um, wherever you are in the world, because um, I think you could come up with the answer for someone to feel fantastic. It's my goal at least. Yeah. It's my goal. And I think a lot of times people are looking for answers and they should find a good functional medicine doctor to give them those. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? Really cares. cares. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for being on my show.